Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافي مزيدا الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وعملا صالحا ولسانا ذاكرا وقلبا خاشعا ورزقا حلالا طيبا مباركا يا كريم يا فتاة يا مولانا يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين. Respected brothers and elders, mothers and sisters in Islam, I would like to start off my topic with an example. In business, they say there are three stages within a startup. There are three stages within a startup. The first stage, they give the similitude or the example of a farm. The first stage is to plant the seed. In planting the seed, it's about turning the soil, testing the soil to see whether the soil will be uh, will be have all of the nutrition and all of the things that are uh, important in order to grow the right vegetation. The second stage is the irrigation stage. In the irrigation stage. They line up the water system. They make sure that when the fruits are still not bare, not ripe yet, they create these nets around the fruits or the vegetation to make sure that no animal is eating of the fruit. This is called the irrigation stage. And the third stage is what they call the harvest. This is where you reap the benefits. This is where you pick the fruit. This is where you bear. This is where you reap the benefits of your hard work. If a person tries to reap the benefits in the seeding stage, harvesting, he will find no pleasure. And if he does this in the irrigation stage, he will also find no benefit. Similar has Allah Ta'ala created life. Allah has created life so that we can recognize Allah, that we can worship Allah, that we can be part of those who are successful in this life but most importantly in the life hereafter. This life that we live is very short. And Allah Ta'ala through His mercy has made this life short because this life depends, the life that comes after depends upon this life. So may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala allow us to pass inshaAllah Ta'ala successfully. So Allah Ta'ala has created this month Sha'aban as a very significant month. In a similar way, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam highlights the system by saying, "Allahumma barik fi Raja wa Shaaban wa balikna Ramadan." Allah subhanahu wa taala, through the inspiration of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, tells us that we make a dua, "O oh Allah, bless the month of Raja and Shaaban." and allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. Similar, we see that Rajab, Sha'ban, and Ramadan has significance. If we look at the translation of the word Sha'ban, the word Sha'ban comes from the word Shi'ab. And the word Shi'ab in the Arabic language means the bottom of a valley. The word Shi'ab means the bottom of a valley. And we can see why. Because you have these two significant months, and then you find Sha'aban in the middle. You have the holy months, which is Rajab, a month where it is sacred, that one cannot fight in this sacred month. And then on the other hand, we know the month of Ramadan and its virtues. It's also called Sha'aban from Shi'ab because the Arabs used to collect water in the valleys. Remember, the valleys are always going to be the lowest point. So they would go before the month of Ramadan and they would collect the water in these valleys. So my respected brothers and elders, just like the example that I give you, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith that's reported by Usama bin Zayd bin Harith. 
the stepson of Rasulullah son. He sees the Prophet وسلم, excessively fasting in the month of Sha'ban. And he comes up to the Prophet وسلم, and says, oh, Prophet of Allah, I have not seen you fast except for the month of Ramadan like you fast in the blessing month of Sha'ban. The Prophet وسلم, replies and he says, it is a month that is many times forgotten. What does a person say? I'm not going to increase my a'mal, I'll wait for Ramadan. Person wants to go to diet, he doesn't start in Sha'ban, he's like, I'll wait for Ramadan while I'm fasting, I'll also work on my diet. A person will always create that they find themselves at the lowest point in Sha'ban, waiting for the month of Ramadan. Just like business, how you have the seeding stage, which is Raja, the intention, having your plan in place and say, okay, the month of Ramadan is coming, what am I going to do different this time? What are some of the diseases that in, as an individual do I know I have? My personality, my ways, do I lie, do I steal? My, the, my manners, my conduct with my wife, all of these things have to be put into consideration and deep thought must be made in the month of Rajab. It's a seeding time. In the month of Sha'aban, the Prophet wasallam, the second thing he says is that this is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes stock of every soul. The good deeds and the bad deeds are taken stock in the month of Sha'aban. I would like to be in the state of fasting when Allah is taking stock of me. I would like to be in the state of fasting when Allah is taking stock of me. The Prophet Sallallahu tells us that Allah Ta'ala says that in the month of Ramadan, we are rewarded 10 to 700 times in reward. But when it comes to fasting, Allah says, it's by me. Meaning that its ajr cannot be multiplied. Its ajr cannot be multiplied. When a person prays, can we see that a person's praying? Yes. When a person paying zakat, can we see that a person pays zakat? Yes. When a person goes for hajj, can we see that a person is performing hajj? Yes. But can you see if a man is fasting? So fasting is something really beautiful. And we would find that the Prophet of Allah would find himself in the harvesting stage. We would find the Prophet wasallam in the harvesting stage of his existence. And that is now excessive fasting in the month of Sha'aban. The Sahaba also mentioned that in this month, it is also called the month of Quran. Because Sahaba and the Prophet of Allah excessively prepared for the month of Ramadan by reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see in history, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam excessively prepared for the month of Ramadan by fasting, by reading Quran, and number three, by salah. A Sahaba mentions that once he saw the Prophet وسلم, praying salah in Masjid Nabawi at night. So the Sahaba says that I went to stand behind him and the Prophet was reading Surah Baqarah. And he said, I thought to myself that the Prophet of Allah would read one or two pages and go down. But the Prophet وسلم, kept on reading until he finished Surah Baqarah. And then when he finished Surah Baqarah, I thought he will go down. But then the Prophet of Allah started Ali Imran. La ilaha illallah. And then after Al Imran, I thought the Prophet of Allah will stop and then he started Ma'idah. And then the Prophet وسلم, went into Ruku' and the equivalent amount of time that he was in Qiyam, in standing, in Tilawat of Quran, he, the same amount of time he was in Ruku' and the same amount of time he was in Sujood. This was the actions and the preparations that one took, that the Prophet وسلم, took in the month of Sha'aban, what preparations have we made? Do we prepare our stationery for our children's school when school starts or before the school, way before? Do we prepare our financials when it's the financial month or months before the financial month? 
anything and everything that we find significant in our life, how much preparation is there in what we do? And then ask ourselves the question, if we truly believe that the month of Ramadan is the month that I can change myself, I can make a difference in my life, I can see the significance that the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned, what Allah says about the month, am I preparing? This brings me to the next point. It is mentioned a hadith that comes in Ibn Umajah. The hadith mentions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, and this hadith again is agreed by some and not by some. The hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions that Allah in the blessed month of Sha'ban takes stock and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgives the sins of humanity. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgives the sins of humanity except five people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive any sin except the sins of five people. Let's go through these five people. Don't we want Allah to forgive us? Isn't every action that we do with it, charity, reading Quran, praying salah, coming for Juma, doing any good is about Allah forgiving us. So the Prophet Sallallahu says that five people, Allah will forgive everyone and anyone except five people. Number one, Al-Mushrik. The one that associates partners with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The one that puts, associates Allah with one of His creation. Allah is one. And he is self-sufficient. He is the creator, sustainer, nourish, and provider. He is the he is the qadi, and he is the qada. He is the judge of all judges. And Allah's decree is the only decree. There is no decree besides Allah's decree. But not only this as associating partners with Allah, but if a person puts money before Allah, if a person puts his family before Allah, if a person puts his own desires in front of Allah, this is a small form of shirk. When we do something, are we doing it sincerely, completely, purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or is there any other ulterior motives behind what we do? Because for Allah is only that which is completely purely for Allah. For Allah is only that which is purely for the sake of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of any shirk that we have committed. And it's a day-to-day -day challenge for us. One moment our iman is up and the next person swears us or says something and khalas, there we go again. So this is not something that someone can say, I've got it. It's something that we are trying to achieve in our lifetime. So inshallah, may Allah give us the ability to be part of those that we do not have shirk in our life. Number one. Number two, al-mushahin. Al-mushahin. The mushahin is the person that holds a grudge against someone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will not forgive the person that holds a grudge for somebody else. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting in Masjid Nabawi. And the Sahaba are sitting around the Prophet of Allah and a man walks in. This man is not known by everyone. And the Prophet of Allah points at him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Oh my companions, he is guaranteed paradise. Abu Huraira said, Ya Allah, that was... This is what we live for. So we followed him. One day, two days, three days. But we saw nothing about him that was out of the ordinary. What he was doing, we were doing. Why has the Prophet of Allah guaranteed him paradise? So on the third day, they come to him and say, Oh, oh our brother, the Prophet of Allah has guaranteed you paradise. But we don't know why. What you're doing is what we're doing. Look at the answer of the Sahaba. This Sahaba says, I do not know of any action that is out of the ordinary. But an action that I do with istiqama, I can tell him. And that action is, before I go to bed every single night, if anyone hurt my feelings, I will forgive them. Anyone that hurt my feelings, doesn't matter what they did to me, I will forgive them. And number two, number two, if anyone I hurt, I will not go to bed unless I go and ask forgiveness from that person. The Prophet Sallallahu gave ishara, indication, saying for this he's getting paradise. 
The guy that is muscly is not the guy that is defined as a man. One day I'm sitting in my house, in my, in my masjid, in Academy Alive, and my child says to me, what's a man? And I said, son, a man is a person that is brave. And he says, explain. I said, I'll give you an example. I said, how old are you, son? He said, I'm 13. I said, if a four-year-old or a 10-year-old comes to you and stands in front of you, and you stand in front of him, is that being brave? He says, no. I said, okay. I said, if, what if Uncle Robbie comes? I don't know if anyone knows he's Uncle Robbie. He's a friend of mine. Tattooed, fully tattooed, bald head. Massive guy. What if he's standing in front of you? Now, we all know Uncle Robbie's a teddy bear. But let's just say he's aggressive. And he's standing in front of you. And you're still standing there. I said to him, are you scared? He says, yes. But are you standing there? He says, yes. I said, that's bravery. That's bravery. Not doing the things that is in our control, but that which is out of our control. But we're scared. That's being a man. Today's time, we've hired the definition of a man as a guy with tattoo, speaks like a British, has this type of, wears a suit, has a briefcase, knows his computer. We have defined everything else besides what Islam teaches us what is a man. So being a man is able to forgive and to forget. And this is one of the topics, inshallah ta'ala, I'll be talking about specifically, inshallah, in the next couple of weeks, inshallah. Fa'afu wasfa, not only to forgive, but to forget. Don't bring it up. Don't mention it again. If you're forgiven, it's of the past. It's history. Let bygones be bygones. Turn a new plate. Have a clean heart. Only the strong man can do this. This is a true strong person that can forgive for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah is bigger than him. That because Allah says forgive, he says I've forgotten. But if his emotion is taking the bit of him, well, according to Allah Ta'ala, so the man. So the second person is the Mushahim, the person that holds a grudge. Number three is Al Mutakabir, the one that has pride and arrogance. Allah in the month of Sha'aban will not forgive the person who has an atom seed of pride. Pride is from Shaitan. As Allah Ta'ala instigates in the Quran, he tells us that he told the angels to prostrate, except who prostrated? Shaitan. And Allah Ta'ala tells us what was the mother emotion that made him part of those. He's an open enemy. Aba was takbar. He refused because he was proud. So if we have a morsel of pride, in this hadith it's mentioned, in the month of Sha'aban, Allah will not forgive the person who has a morsel of takabur pride in his heart. <coughs> Number four is al muqati'ah Number four is al muqati'ah the one that severs ties. The one that severs ties. In Surah Baqarah, Allah Ta'ala tells us, huh? what does Allah Ta'ala say? Allah Ta'ala says in, the, in Surah Baqarah, Allah is defining what is kabayr. Allah is defining what is a person who's a mudlim, a person who is a, a person who's a corrupter. Allah Ta'ala says he is the one where Allah Ta'ala told to join, he separates. He separates. Mothers, fathers, children, brothers, society, you know, musallis that were together for years. One issue happened, bang, society's split apart. <coughs> One small thing happens and we can't pray behind that person anymore. One thing happens, we find any and every reason not to speak to that person, not to respect that person. That is not part of a believer. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in this hadith, that Allah does not accept the dua of a muqati'a, a person who serves ties. Number five, and the final lucky five, and mudmin and mudmin and mudmin is the person who justifies the sin he's doing. Oh, it's all right, as long as I'm praying. It's okay, it's, it's sometimes, not always. Yeah, it's all right, Allah is ghafoor rahim, ghafoor rahim. 
One is you know, I'm sinning. Every man sins, but he knows he feels guilty. I want to get rid of this habit. What I'm doing is wrong. But when it gets to a point where a person says, oh, this is okay, Lillahi ta'ala. Today's time, people will be backbiting and say, for the sake of Allah. We're backbiting for the sake of Allah. Come on. We, do you not think Allah is the control of the heart? Do you not see that Allah Ta'ala knows what's in the heart? Do you not think that we'll be accountable? Do you not think we're going to die? Do you not think that you're not recorded? Allah Ta'ala records what's in the heart. Hmm? Do we not think that Allah Ta'ala records what's in the heart? So the mudmin is a person that Allah Ta'ala says something is haram, forbidden, and the person justifies it, acts upon it by justification. So let's go over it one more time. The hadith mentions in the month of Sha'ban, the Prophet says, Allah is willing to forgive any sin except for five people. The first one, Al Mushrik, the one that associates partners with Allah. Number two is Al Mushahid, the one that holds grudges. Number three, Al Muqati', the one that severs ties. And the fourth one, I missed one, Al Mushrik. Al Mushahin, Al Muqati, Al Mutakabir, the one that has arrogance. And number five, Al Mudmin, the one that justifies one's sin. So, this month of Ramadan, as mentioned, is the month of irrigation. For those who are coming late, we mentioned the example that these three months, Rajab, Sha'aban, Ramadan, is the like of the seeding stage of planting. Irrigation stage, Sha'aban, and the harvesting stage, which is Ramadan. In order for us to get full benefit from the month of Ramadan, we need to occupy ourselves with the actions of what Rasulullah wasallam done through authentic hadith, which were three. Excessive fasting in the month of Ramadan. Number two, excessive Quran recitation in the month of, Ramadan, in the month of Sha'aban. And excessive salah in the month of of Sha'aban. A, a note before I end off. When we talk about fasting in this month, the ulama through the hadith have mentioned that one should not fast the entire month. Imam Shafi'i rahimullah says, you should fast the first 15 days and not the second 15 days. Jumhur ulama, the majority of the scholars say no, you can fast as much as possible based upon another hadith except the last three days. Another hadith mentions that you should not only fast on a Saturday. If you're fasting on a Saturday, you should fast on a Saturday plus another day. The exception to this rule is that if a person took an oath and he broke his oath, then he has to do consecutive fasting. One can do so. The other way or reason that a person can fast consecutively throughout the month, if a person is having to pay back a fast, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. May Allah ta'ala bless the month of Sha'aban. Allow us to reach the month of Ramadan. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.